Wouldn't you love to create your own personal oasis? What is an oasis, you ask? An oasis is something that provides refuge, relief, or a pleasant contrast, and that is exactly what you will find at AJO Consulting Services, LLC. AJO Consulting Services is a company that provides individuals, communities, and businesses of color with coaching and consulting services, personal and professional development, as well as social and community connection services. These services include, but are not limited to, dating, life, relationship, and business coaching, finance management, travel experience curation, wellness navigation, and much more. Are you ready to find, connect, and release? Come experience your oasis today. Visit our website to learn more at www.ajoconsultingservices.com. Follow us on Facebook at AJO Consulting and Instagram at AJO Consult. Also, email us at info at ajoconsultingservices.com. Hey everyone, welcome to the Oasis Podcast. I'm your host, Miss AJ. Thanks for tuning in. An Oasis is something that provides refuge, relief, or a pleasant contrast, and that is exactly what you will find tuning into the Oasis Podcast. This is a space where I and special guests will be cultivating intentional and honest conversations about life's journey. Subscribe everywhere you listen to podcasts and watch us on YouTube now. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to the Oasis Podcast. Thank you all for joining us again. And look who is back on the episode. Hey, Mac, the travel guy. Hey, 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 what's up? What's going on? What's going on? Thank you for having me again as a guest on your podcast. It's been a while. It has been. And some things have come up. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Our... What are you talking about? Yeah. Definitely got some conversation, you know, around uh, vacations, uh, you know, soul travel versus uh, group travel, things of that nature. Okay, okay. So once again, some background for those of you, this is the first time you're seeing myself and Mr. Mac the Travel Guy. We met in a travel group on Facebook. Was it Facebook? It, it was Facebook. It was yeah. a travel group. Yes, yes, yes. And it was, you know, a group for, I think, some singles who like to travel and were willing to, like, essentially meet someone and travel with them, right? And see what where it went. Very interesting group. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah, lot very. of good things happened in that group. A lot of funny stories. A lot of, like, what? <laughs> stories that we discussed on a previous episode. Um, so go ahead and check that out. But on this episode, we are going to do solo travel versus group traveling, which also includes vacation locations. So we did a previous episode on vacations about our experiences of vacation. We're going to do a little mini follow up with that one, but also really talk about what solo travel looks like versus what group traveling looks like for those of you who are interested in maybe doing solo traveling or those of you who not sure how to kind of maneuver group traveling. We are going to give you all the tips all right to how to maneuver that and also trying to plan your first vacation of course listen to that episode but we're going to give some more tips and tools about making sure you choose a perfect location depending on how long you've been with your partner and to kind of choose places that are conducive to hopefully a successful <laughs> vacation for you yeah. all. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> so Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I know, again, you can go, you can know by his name, Mac the Travel Guy. He loves to travel. Honestly, I think you're probably one of the first few dudes that said they like to travel and they actually did it. Okay. <laughs> like, like dudes love to be like, yeah, I travel. I'm like, where you been to? You got a passport? And you know, Thank question you. mark. But I know you love to travel. You also do travel alone. And I know in our previous episode, we talked about, you know, a little bit about some solo traveling and the differences that I think of how to maneuver that when you're a man versus a woman and choosing the right locations and things of that nature. So we could touch up with, about that a little bit. But Mac loves to travel. I know you have your Instagram page and your YouTube. I'm not 100% sure, you know, like if you like deep into it, but I know you started it. 
definitely had those things up and going. I know you love a good little cigar and a little, you know, cigar lounge and things like that. So <laughs> drop those colors out here. But Mac is out here in these streets. He loves to travel. He'd be outside. So let's start out by talking about where did your love for travel come from and what kind of got you to this space of wanting to share your experiences of travel with people? Uh, wow. Well, that is one heck of an intro to have to uh, follow up. So that being said, my journey for uh, travel uh, really started out when I was a kid. My I come from a huge family, and we did a lot of road trips uh, for family reunions, you know, down south, out Midwest. But it's funny because now as an adult, I kind of had to like backtrack, you know, like you know, go to like Colorado. I remember you know going out there. That was a pit stop on the way to a reunion. Uh, we had relatives who lived in Boulder. And, you know, we went up to uh, Pikes Peak and all that, you know, they, you know, so it's a lot of things that I've done as a kid that I kind of feel like I have to repeat as an adult. But th that's where the, the, the love of travel came from or the introduction to travel, rather. But the actual love and passion for travel really came about. I think I took my, my first solo cruise in 2012. And that's where I, I just kind of fell in love with it. I was like, you know, this is wow. You know, you wake up, you know, in a different place every day on a cruise anyway. And it, it kind of, it evolved from there. Uh, fast forward to 2017, yeah, 2017, I took my first solo trip abroad, you know, by uh, Amsterdam in Egypt. So those, yeah, those, those, that was an experience that just kind of put my eyes uh, up to a lot of things. And exposure. Okay. I mean, it sounds great. Your your experience with travel started as a child. I think mine was different. I mean, I traveled here and there as a kid, but not really. I remember going to Montreal with my mom. She used to do like little church trips. And uh, mostly where I was, uh, where I've been growing up was seeing family. So we would go like to Florida or to Boston. I think we had some family in Virginia, but we didn't do it extensive trips and we didn't do a lot of like big family trips. So I didn't really do a bulk of my traveling until I got older. And honestly, I did most of my traveling within my twenties into my thirties. Um, so my love for travel kind of slowly grew because I always had a fear of planes. And so that kept me like, oh, I don't like to fly. But I had to like really be like, F that. <laughs> I got I to gotta do what I got to do. You can't get to your destination if you don't take this plane. So I had to figure it out. And since right. I travel with my fear. So even till now, I still have a fear, but I do it. And I've, you know, been tons of places, still have a lot of places I still would like to visit. But I love traveling, love the experience of being in a new place. And for me, it's a good reset. I don't know, like, how you feel when you travel, kind of what the thought process is. But it's a great reset for me, like, of just putting things into perspective back home. You know what I mean? Like, you might be stressed at home or you might you know, be going through some things, but going, when you travel, it gives me a sense of like feeling blessed, right? Having the ability to even do that. And also it just gives me a fresh perspective when I do go home, I have fresh eyes. I just feel better. I'm able to like really kind of just examine things with new lenses. And that's one thing I always tell people if you can, how you can travel, leave where you are used to, find a different place or space to be at and start small. If you're afraid, you know, take road trips, you know, uh, and the U.S. is huge too, right? And this is assuming you live in the U.S. If you do, if not, wherever you are, visit that place, right? Visit the different parts of that place, some different neighborhoods you haven't been into if you can't or you can't afford to go far, but just have an open mind of being a stranger, being a guest, right? Being someone who is not from there. Let yourself feel that uncomfortability. I think I learned a lot about myself doing that. I don't know if you also had that same experience because I know you've solo traveled like all over. So you were able to, you know, immerse yourself and kind of be uncomfortable in that space. Yeah, two points that, that I want to touch on. One, I didn't know you had a fear of flying. I know, still right? do. <laughs> People don't believe me and I tell them like, boys. I know. <laughs> that's that's wild. And I, I forgot the other point, but I may circle back to that. But to your last point about traveling, you know, that feeling of vulnerability, right? You know, like stepping off the plane and 
the one not knowing the language because that like the language is real i mean don't get me wrong google is our best friend <laughs> when it comes to translation but sometimes you know learning you know, a new language before you get there it, it can definitely go a long way like for instance in france or in paris you know I, I was told that you know the french are for lack of better words or terms snobby ish and and you know some people will, will correlate that with race and whatnot uh i just took it as as, as a french thing right so I, I spoke very little just enough like my name is you know and like where you know where do i go and how can i find it and I, but going into a restaurant and then trying to read the menu which mm -hmm. they, they don't have dual language right it's like wow you know i really had i really had to learn it and it's not that they're not helpful but they're like listen you have been like my country like you didn't learn how to speak <laughs> my language so i i've had those experiences the i think the thrill of it is uh getting lost right i think that's like that's a whole part of you know travel right you know mm -hmm. uh trying to figure things out like me i like to walk around a lot especially you know in, in, in a new place new country city it's uh how, how can i I'm trying to think of the white word or phrase, but I think everybody's been there, that the feeling of, oh, I'm lost. I don't know where I'm at. Or where do I go? But in a sense, when you find yourself, like, for instance, my first time in Paris, I walked to the Eiffel Tower from, you know, from my uh, hotel. So that was very interesting. I could see it because it's huge from where it's at. So I was like, okay, maybe if I walk in this direction, that you know, that, that'd get me to it. So that that was pretty cool, you know, because I, I ran into some other things that, that I, I didn't know was there, like uh, the obelisk for those that are up on um, Egyptian, you know, uh, like our history, you know, seeing Cairo in Paris, like, wait, where did this come from? And so that was a whole history lesson in and, of, in and of itself. So yeah, I, I definitely understand with that. I, I try to encourage people to take a solo trip at least once. Uh, and it doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't have to be abroad. You know, I mean, some, some folks, I, we know some people that haven't even really left out of their own zip code. And for whatever reason, they, you know, they won't go. But I, I think it's a a fantastic way, as you said, to uh, learn yourself, learn more about yourself than, than, than what you come to know in, in your present state. Absolutely. I definitely recommend travel, period, but definitely take one trip by yourself. Like, it is the, it's scary and also invigorating and freeing and all the things. Like, it is, it's, it's something about it being able to, if you haven't done group travel, so you already know, you have to like do so much agreeing. We're going to talk about that. But taking a solo <laughs> trip, knowing I can get up when I want to get up and go when I want to go. I do do an episode on solo travel where I took my first solo trip. Well, well, since at that time, I took my, that was my first first solo trip. And I loved it. Everyone was so scared. Like, oh my gosh, you go by yourself. What do you mean? What are you going to do? I'm like, I'll be okay. <laughs> like, I'll drop my location. And, and you know what it is too. I think coming from, you know, I'm, you know, born and raised in Brooklyn. So we got a mindset. We got a, you know what I mean? Like everybody trying to do you some harm. So you better be careful. But reality is a lot of places, a lot of people are really nice. Like they're really nice. <laughs> Versus like being in New York or being in the city like where no one wants to help you everyone's giving you the side eye you know what I mean everyone is not trusting other places people are really nice they want to help you and they don't really bother you if you don't really bother them so I you know wholeheartedly agree with you know, everything you said but that that last statement I have so many conversations with with people uh, in particular like my, my sister I've been trying to get her to like just go just out and part of that is because one, her and her friends, you know, their work schedules, you know, don't necessarily align. So when she's off, they're not that, you know, that whole thing, you know, how that goes. And so she's always like, I, you know, I want to travel, I want to go. Now I will say I'm I'm in a position, thankfully, where I kind of have the extreme flexibility to just kind of like take time and you know, I get talked about all oh, he's always gone, he's always traveling, he's ever at work. So when I find these deals, you know, I try to send them out, you know, to people that don't want to travel. But yeah, to your point, I've never felt unsafe, if you will. 
in, in, a, in another, in a foreign country. And I know sometimes people will say, well, you know, you're a man, you know, so it's different, you know, than, than being, a, you know, a woman. And I know, how, I know plenty of women that travel solo. And uh, unfortunately, most will tell you that they feel the most unsafe here on U.S. soil for whatever reason. Now, there have been some stories, you know, I mean, you know, seen it, you know, for, and I think the movie Taken has really <laughs> like, given, a whole new pers- yeah, it, given the perspective on traveling that people never thought about, right? But it also kind of keeps people grounded, if you will, because they're like, well, man, I don't want to go to Europe because, you know, I go to Europe and then, you know, I get off the plane and, you know, they're going to snatch me right up. You know, little do they know, you know, and well, I mean, you brought up Brooklyn, but I, I'll bring up, you know, Times Square, people that know the history of Times Square, you know, when the bus is pulling, Greyhound bus is pulling the, you know, Port Authority, you know, them guys, well, they can see you looking because you're looking at all the lights like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're not from here. So, yeah, yeah, you know, but that, that can happen in, in any town in USA, it can happen in, you know, in, in any country. I always tell people to, you know, be cognizant you know, where you're at, your surroundings. Okay, and yeah. listen to those physiological changes that your body will go through because your mm-hmm. body will let you know, that, hey, you know, the hair, as they say, the hair is on the back of your neck, stand up, you know, you get the goosebumps, you know, something ain't right, you know, so it's time for you, you know, to, to make an exit. But that said, it's, it, it's extremely fun. It's, it's liberating, you know, yeah, your first trip is going to be scary. Anything yeah. you do for the first time is, is going to be scary, right? Because you've never done it. But yeah, I, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's great. So we already kind of jumped in and started talking about solo travel. What do you feel? I mean, we already kind of talked about some of the perks, but let's start off with even choosing the location for your solo travel. What do you think is like key things to to look for? I would say key things to look for really reside within you, right? You have to know what, what it is you like and, and like to do and want to get out of the trip. You know, I know for me, a, a lot of it has to do with, you know, just the new experiences, history also, uh, you know, like that was, um, for instance, like when I went to Dubai, I was going, you know, because I always said, you know, I wanted to go. As a matter of fact, I wanted to stand over Palm Island, but, you know, I had a little bit too much weight. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know there was a weight restriction, you know, to, to skydive. So uh, while I was there, I was like, oh, well, let me, you know, see where else I can get to while I'm over in this region. And in Egypt, you know, popped up. was like, oh, well, I got to go to Egypt. I mean, we always learn about the pyramids and, and King T- you know, all these great pharaohs and, and whatnot. So I'm like, why not go? So I booked a trip while I was on a trip to, um, you know, to Egypt. And that, that's that's how that happened. So for me, like I said, yeah, the history, the the new experiences of it all, culture, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we, I think that's the biggest, we're not that different from one another, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, they just, yeah. we just speak a different language. Yeah. We like to eat. We like, <laughs> you know, right. we like to, yeah. Well, what about yourself? Yeah, agreed. We definitely all love to eat, have fun. So that's usually across the board. I think with solo travel, again, your experience will be different because I do think it, it it is different being a man traveling alone and being a woman traveling alone. I think we pay attention to different things than you guys pay attention to, but I definitely agree in regards to what it what do you like? So aim for something. If you like beaches, then go to a place where there's a beach that you can enjoy. If you like history, go to a place where they, there is full of history or they have some museums or just sites that you can go and see. That's definitely true. And I think the other piece of it is making sure, again, being a woman, I'll do a search first. There's some locations that are safe for women to travel to. You know what I mean? And I think that's a good place to start. Knowing already, knowing what you like, then looking at the list to say, oh, okay, this kind of aligns with what I like. Let me choose that location to see where I would like to go. Your first trip doesn't even need to be like, you don't have to necessarily have to get on a plane to get there, but have the intention of, I'm going to do this by myself. It's really what I want to do. It's how I want to do it. It could be, you know what, you can live in New York and say, you know, what? I'm going to venture to Jersey. I've never been to Jersey by myself. I'm going to venture to Jersey. I'm going to do a weekend in Jersey and see what they have to offer. You know what I mean? And Jersey is right. a really nice place to go. Like there's so much to do in Jersey, like so much to do in Jersey. You know, New Yorkers like to give Jersey a bad rep. 
I particularly like Jersey. So even something that small, what it does is one, you have, you know, all the things that are going to get done is everything you want to do. Two, right. it also builds confidence in like your ability. So when you finish that trip, you get back, you navigated what you had to navigate and you got back, you know, God willing, whole and safe, you know, oh, I can do that again, <laughs> you know? All right, let's now go uh, to Connecticut or whatever, right? You can just like slowly start venturing out a little bit out. And, and then that then makes you just, want to experience more things and, and it helps you open up your thoughts and your mind. I mean, I kind of went down south for my first trip, like went to Myrtle Beach, my first solo trip. And but for me, oh, wow. Wow. Myrtle, yeah, Myrtle. Myrtle, it was so nice. It was such a great trip. The thing is I've traveled, I don't know if this is considered solo traveling though. Like before that, I've gone on a plane. I planned a trip, gone on the plane, and I just like happen to know people that so I'll meet up with people, but then I'll also spend parts of the trip by myself. So I don't know if that's considered solo though. So I would say that trip, I didn't know anybody. Like I've never been there before. I literally just was like, I want to go to Murder Beach. I'm going to Murder Beach. And that's the end of that. And I got on the plane and I went. And so I was able to navigate things on my own. I didn't stay too close to home. But at the same time, I didn't feel like it was that far either. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to Egypt you know <laughs> I just left so for me it, I felt safe it felt nice I knew Myrtle Beach had the things that I enjoyed it had the beach I love the beach it had at the time there was a fair going on so that was fun it has food love food had you know had like you know seafood which I also love you know and they, they, they had um, good transportation you know I was able to catch cabs they said it was safe to travel to there was a Waffle House close by. Uh, <laughs> Waffle House, shout out to Waffle House. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I said, I'm going. We out there. We did it. And it was one of the best trips I've ever taken, honestly. It was amazing. It was great. So, and the weather was pretty good. And there was really no complaints for me for that trip at all. So I think those are key things to pay attention to. There are going to be naysayers. There are going to be people going to try to like make you scared for whatever reason. And that has to do with their own fear. You know, mm -hmm. of course, to your gut when you are in a situation, but prior to, don't let those who've never done it scare you into not doing it. You know, right. people are right. so big on that, like stopping people from experiencing things, but you've never done it. Why would you assume that the worst thing that's going to happen is going to happen to me then, you know? Exactly. And so solo, I think traveling, it's a little easier in the sense of, it's really on you to figure out what you want to do, how you want to do it, and when you want to do it. Now, group travel, baby. <laughs> baby, I consider group traveling what, like two or more people. Groups, I know we like to think that like, it's huge, but even having one extra person, it's still easier. It's definitely easier the less amount of people that's added. However, it's still more minds having to come together in agreement. And I think that's where it becomes more difficult. You have multiple personalities, multiple likes, mul multiple needs, having to one, even get to the planning, get the planning done all the way into the actual execution of things takes a lot of patience. And I don't think it's for the weak or faint of heart. <laughs> uh, you, can, you can chime in on what your experience has been with group travel. Ah, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think less is more in, t in terms of, uh, of that. I know we, we talk a great deal about solo travel. So yeah, so you start adding people in, in, into the mix. Well, let, let's backtrack a little bit. First of all, when you talk about group travel, okay, everybody has to be on, on the same page when it comes to that, right? Yeah. And your group, it may start out big, I think I know that. And then all of a sudden, when it comes time to start putting money into the pot, you know, or buying your plane ticket or securing, you know, hotel or Airbnb, everybody's like, oh, what, what had happened was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, I think that right there really starts, I, I don't want to say the, the negativity, but that's what we, you know, it, it starts to, the, the downhill fall, if you will, because then you got pause. And I, I understand life happens, you know, sometimes, you, you know, something comes up that unexpectedly that you you just can't make the trip. And I get that. So starting with the, the planning phase, that's that's number one. Two, then traveling with like-minded people. I think that that's the, the other component that people really don't understand. 
Yes. Uh, when you have too many personalities, that becomes problematic once you guys get to that destination because you got a group, you may have two or three, you know, that want to do this and another one or two over here that want to do this. And then that kind of creates havoc because the whole point of a group trip is to kind of like do things together collectively. And so if you don't have that, if you have people that start breaking up into little clicks, if you will, oh, we're going to go over here and do that. And that's cool. There's no problem. When you have that, that downtime, I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But everybody has to be, you know, on, on the same page when it comes to that. I mean, you know, some people want to wake up early, you know, catch the sunrise. I don't mind doing that because I like watching the sunrise. And you have some people that want to sleep in. Then they'll get mad at you because you didn't wake them for the continental breakfast that, you know, <laughs> that was supposed to have. But right. they keep asleep. So, you know, those, I think that's, those are like the, the biggest things when it comes to, uh, you know, like the group travel, you know, getting that schedule together and ironed out, like, hey, listen, this is what we're going to do. You know, we're going to do this, this, and this. And then the free time, you know, that time is yours. You know, absolutely. I think you touched on the two main things for group travel had like bullseye. The, the first hurdle, honestly, is the planning, right? Where are we going to go? When are we going to go? How much is it? How much are people willing to spend? And then the collection of funds, if you know that's how you're doing it, or people are purchasing separately, just kind of having to like, man, get all that together is, again, like why I say not for the faint of heart, simply because shameless plug, I do travel consulting. And why did I get into travel consulting? Because I needed to get paid to be doing all this work when it comes to travel. People don't understand. People just go on a trip and they just see enjoyment. They don't understand how much work and energy goes in prior to that. Like I always somehow became the designated person to plan trips <laughs> and to wrangle stuff in until I got to a point like, no, I need to get paid for this because this is too much. This is too much. It's stressful. It's anxiety provoking. I like to shop, I mean, with and get a deal, right? I like to, even whatever, whether, whether it's travel or not. And there's also other aspects of things I like to experience. So people know that. So they always want to be like, hey, help me do this. Oh, hey, can you plan this? And it's like, okay. <laughs> It takes so much time. It takes so much energy. You got to watch, you know, the planes, how things are going with, you know, that industry because tickets be up, down, left, right, here, here, there. You know what I'm saying? You also have to be, in a sense, spontaneous enough to be like, oh, I see this thing and you're ready to go. And that's how I travel, right? I don't be like, okay, in November, on this week, I'm going to travel. I literally, it'll be October, <laughs> October 31st. And then I'm looking and I see, up oh, planting the what? It's going down, boop. Right. <laughs> and you right. know, like, but that's how I travel. Other people like to be a little more cautious. It has to be this time and we have to do this. And again, people have different reasons for whatever, but they see me traveling like that. And they're just like, they see me traveling rather. And they think, oh, wow, like you must be getting these, like you, you must know this trick. And it's like, no, I just have an open mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm willing to be adaptable and flexible. And that's before... I get to the destination and that's when I get to the destination as well. And I think there's a level, like what you said, the second piece of it is who you're traveling with and traveling with like-minded people, because that can really make or break the trip. That can really make uh -huh. or break the trip. In my regular life, I am structured. I like order. When I travel, I'm a lot more flexible. I'm more like, all right, yeah, there are things I want to hit and I want to see. We can get to them. If we don't, I'm also okay. If we decided, you know what, this beach was beautiful and we decide, even though we had to go do blah, 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 long we didn't pay for it first. But, you know, if we decide, you know what, I just want to stay on the beach and eat some seafood. Can we do X, Y, Z tomorrow? Absolutely. That's yeah. it. You know, whereas some people are like, no, we got to boom, 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 boom. That is not me. So if you are not that person, don't do that. And so people see me go and I do things I know how to, I can adapt, whether it's the situation, it's the location, it's the people I'm with. Other people are not like that. Some people want how things to be the way they want it, and that's what it is. Some people want to go on vacation and stay in the hotel. Okay, that's what you want to do. That's your money. <laughs> go ahead. Some people like to travel and 
they, you know, are on a strict budget and they don't do much of anything. And that could be restrictive, you know what I mean, for the rest of the group. And so all those things have to be put into consideration. And when I do my travel consulting, I ask all these questions because that gives you the who, what, where's, and how, how much of a good time this person wants to have or is likely to have, right? Like all those things are important, especially if you're planning a group travel for people. If you're not going, but especially if you're going, pay attention to all those things. You know what I mean? Ask people their budgets, ask them what they're into, what type of trip this is. Some people might be like, I want to see all the sites. Other people like, I'm here to relax. When y'all get there and y'all didn't talk about this, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. So all those things are essential. They absolutely can make or break a trip. And so keeping those things in mind is absolutely needed. It doesn't mean you'll have a terrible time, but it also doesn't mean that you'll have the best of times if you don't have a conversation about these things. But I think the more you do it, the more you'll you kind of you know get the hang of certain things. However, also keeping in mind, different people is going to change the mix, right? So if you're used to traveling with your sister and now you throw in one of your friends, you and your sister traveling might be awesome. Throwing your friend in there, it's your friend, but that ain't your sister's friend. So that <laughs> changes the dynamic, right? You traveling with your boy, y'all be y'all be good, but then you throw in your other boy, and now things are just weird. So all that plays a part for people to pay attention to. But I know you mentioned your sister and you know, trying to get her to travel, and she wants to travel with groups. Most people want to, they feel safe, you know what I mean? They think they're gonna have a better time. And of course, you know, you want company to do things that you've never done before. Yes. Right. But you know what? Waiting on people to travel, you will never travel. That part. I think that's what a lot of people fail to realize. If you're waiting on others to travel, then, that, you know, as you alluded to, you'll you'll never experience that. And so, you know, like I said, and, and it may not necessarily you, that you have to do a solo. Maybe you might, again, Facebook is, is a great tool. Mm, yeah. to use. There are a ton of other groups that are out there, you know, single women, you know, single black women. Um, you know, it, it, I even saw one that was like designated just for like women engineers, you know, so like it's a group of women engineers that, you know, you know love to travel. So I, I encourage sister you know to to look into that you know if her friends can't go you know um, look into those, those other groups you know start making those bonds and 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 it is like it's very i guess unorthodox if you will you know me trying to meet someone online you know, i guess it's really no different than online dating right but, you know you, you meet somebody you know online that you kind of you know kind of connect with build some type of relationship with and then you know maybe you guys can go ahead on and, and join that group of travel writing own stories incorporated is an organization that embraces and uplifts authors of color and equips them with the tools and resources to write their stories. Writing Our Own Stories Incorporated provides seminars, workshops, and a collaborative writing group setting where authors can feel free to write. We believe in the transformative power of storytelling and we will continue to make space for all stories to be told. Writing Our Own Stories Incorporated provides a safe and welcoming space for all aspiring authors to tell their story. If you're interested in joining our writing group or learning more about our organization, check out our website at www.writingourownstoriesinc.org. That's www.writingourownstoriesinc.org. And make sure and follow us on IG and Facebook at Writing Our Own Stories. Writing Our Own Stories, Inc. has released its debut book, For Black Women by Black Women, an anthology of lessons learned. This debut anthology is a love letter to Black women and for everyone who loves, knows, or wants to support Black women. Purchase your copy of the anthology at www dot writing our own stories inc dot org again that's www dot writing our own stories i n c dot o r g you know that said it yeah, just just go like like we said before it doesn't have to be someplace far and extravagant and, and, and international abroad you know it could literally as you said you know to be the next state over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. It doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be out of the country. But definitely just go. Pull the trigger and just make it happen for yourself. Because honestly, planning group trips take a lot of planning. So if someone doesn't want to take the lead on it, things are never going to get done. And if you're waiting, constantly waiting, waiting, waiting for someone to take the lead because you're not a planner, you're just not going to get things done, unfortunately. But nowadays, I think, at least I think probably the past few years, a lot more of these travel groups have, uh, you know, submerged and it's nice to at least be in a community of people who do travel and willing to travel. Again, it's still strangers, but it's still a group. You're not by yourself, you know? So you right. have that level of safety in that regard. So if that's what you have to do, do it. You know what I mean? It's really sometimes depending on your social circle, it's rare to find people who have the means to travel and the time to travel and have the want to travel like you do. So these groups may be a great place to go to meet like-minded people to get your feet wet until you kind of get to the part where you're like you know what eh, I don't need to you know wait on such and such anymore I'll just go ahead and do it I know actually one trip I went to I did go with my colleague but what we ended up doing which is something you could do you can plan a trip by yourself you know do all that but if you don't want to be there by yourself again if you're part of one of these travel groups you can literally be like hey I'm in such and such a place who else is here Right. right. And right. you can then meet up with people and, you know, go through the social scene and do stuff. And you know what I mean? You don't have to necessarily have to experience that place and space by yourself. So that's there's so many tips and tools that you can utilize if you do want to you know, pull that trigger and start to travel. But you're not sure how to navigate it. You don't necessarily want to do it solo, but you don't necessarily have a group to go with. There's tons of ways to do that. Absolutely. I want to go back to a, a, a point that, that you made earlier. Uh, in reference to the, the flexibility, right? And people thinking that you, you know, you just have the secret. You know, I, I hate telling people this, but there really is no real secret to finding the deals. You just have to be flexible in the time frame, you know, that, that you're looking at going. Like for instance, I I just booked a trip a couple of weeks ago to go to Nairobi. Mm. So I'll be going to Nairobi in, in October. And nobody, I, I booked a trip for less than $400. The trip was like three seventy five. I bought, and I got actually it was less than that because I bought the trip insurance just in case. And that's a whole other thing. I don't normally get the trip insurance, but I had some things career wise that may come up, which may cause me to have to cancel that trip. But but at, at any rate, you know, I, I bought the the ticket because I was like, oh wait a minute, Nairobi for to go to you know go to Africa, you know, from the U S. That that's a heck of a deal. So you know, sixty days out. You know, I, I bought I bought the ticket and I'm like, yeah, okay, we're going to November or October. So I'll be there for like eight days and I'm already trying to figure out where else I can get to while I'm over there. Like right. I, I want to go to Zanzibar, you know, I want to go to Tanzania. And somebody else just told me that I, I would have just missed the uh, great migration of the wildebeest. Now, you know, it's kind of got me down to the dumps because I'm like, hey, you know, I want to go on a safari tour. That'd be kind of cool to see him jumping over the river and doing all that, you know, mm -hmm. stuff in the Lion King. But yeah, you have to be flexible with the, with your travel, and 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 no, that's when you can get you know the the best deals. But if you're fixated, you know, like for instance, people's birthdays, I know that that's a huge one, you know. But if you if you're flexible, if you don't necessarily have to travel on that date, and you can find a better deal, maybe go earlier or after. Why not? You okay. know? I think that's key. You have to be flexible and not necessarily be set in the ways or having to wait for special times and dates and things. But I think another big key component is, and we're going to get into like, you know, vacations as well, but another second component that's really also important is having or starting to have, this is something I suggest in my consultation business is creating a travel budget. It don't matter. You may have nowhere in mind, but every paycheck putting aside some money so that when you are ready to go, you can just, boop, boop, and that's not an issue, right? But I think that has to come with a mindset of travel being a part of your life and not just something some people get to experience, right? So when you, just like you budget for your rent and you're budgeting for food, you should put away money for travel. Because if that is you making that a, a part part of your life, it's something that's it's, it's enriching to your spirit. It's enriching to you as an individual. Do that. 
And it really will alleviate a lot of stress. I think, at least for me, since I started doing that years ago of, oh, damn, I want to travel. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. And we're, uh, Mac and I are going to talk about in another episode about like how to really get some travel deals, but also there's some perks that comes to traveling. So sometimes you have to be able to like, you know, book things in a particular way using credit cards or doing certain things to get certain perks so keeping that in mind but even if you have to you know put it on your credit card to get certain miles or some type of perks okay that's cool but you know you have the money there so that one you can pay that off or you have some money when you go on a trip to spend money right like you don't want to go there and you can't really enjoy things because you don't have the funds right so you know you have money already set aside that ain't your rent money that ain't your you know your baby's money like it's your money <laughs> and you can utilize it for what you want i think those those things are really 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 important the adaptability and having that budget for sure absolutely i agree so part of group travel two people i consider group is vacations we have a whole episode on vacations y'all can go ahead and listen to that one right we talked about you know our experiences and some key things about to think of and look out for in regards to vacations but i think that vacations are considered to me considered group travel because there's one other entity that you have to you know figure things out with a couple (laughs) <laughs> yeah. play a couple right. I don't think you necessarily have to go on vacations with everyone you're dating okay that may not be necessary all right so I know people are like really like oh I want to go vacation I want to go vacation they think you don't do that with everybody okay I'm gonna throw that out there now <laughs> you are choosing you know to go with somebody make sure again all the things we mentioned previously about group traveling you need to make sure that that person also falls within that somewhat right. like-mindedness right they have the ability they have the adaptability to travel and in the planning phase they are present right they are giving ideas they are even if they may not they, even if they may be open but they are not open in the sense of because this is something that I hate when, when traveling. Now, oh, don't worry. It's, you know, whatever you want to do, it's fine. I'm cool with it. And then when you get suggestion, mm, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. So then you're not open. They're to not, open to that. not open to it. What right. do you want to do? Or are they just right. do things that give no suggestions? No. Right. So your your bay that you're choosing to go on this vacation with has to still be adaptable, has to be helping in regards to the planning, right? Have to be, if they're open, then truly be open to work, what you choose and whatever the case is. But so we kind of addressed some of that in our previous episode. For this part of the episode, I think it's important to, I'm not sure if we've really talked about really honing in on what are good Bay location locations to visit. I mean, I personally think that depending on where you go depends on how long you guys have been together now i want to hear your thoughts or opinion on that but that's for me the biggest deal and biggest thing so what are your thoughts on locations choosing a location for nice little couples retreat i just want to go on record to state, and i think i've seen this meme floating around but it says uh, a a non-traveler couldn't date a, a traveler if that makes sense right so <laughs> segueing into ideal vacation locations, I think that's going to be, like you said, depend, depending on the couple, what their interests are. I, I get what you're saying about the, about the length of time, you know, in terms of, you know, where, you know, your vacation should be. There are so many moving parts to that, right? Ideally, I would probably say, you know, start out small. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily say go, you know, over the, the top with, your first location and you know it, it, it could be as simple as going down you know it, you know Myrtle, i'll use myrtle beach you know or in my case you know ocean, ocean city maryland you know you know nice places that you can go and and enjoy one's time and company all right i'll tell you i i took somebody that, that i dated you know i took her to uh paris um i think she enjoyed well i i know she enjoyed you know she did, but that's something that I probably will never do again. <laughs> uh, it's probably something I won't do again. And 
It's not because we didn't have a good time there. We did. I just think that, you know, that's like a one. And done. Okay. I, I was with her, you know, for a period of time and decided, Hey, well, let's go to Paris. So I probably won't take another woman to, you know, to Paris. Like, Hey, you know, I, I'm in love with you. And, you know, let's, you go, you know, but yeah, I, I honestly, it's style that in, I think it, it really depends on the couple, what, what their, um, you know, interests are. And yeah, you know, it, it really is just about you know, spending that, spending that, quality time together you know i don't want to say I have a policy but i when i'm on a vacation or or if I'm, you know some you know or vacation or just vacationing with somebody that i'm in a relationship with right I, I try to give my partner that that time and attention so I, I i tend not to do a whole lot of social media polls you know like checking the facebook you know kind of thing because i really want to give that give her that t- you know time and attention i think that's like the whole point of, of, of a vacation you know really you know spending that quality time together you know, that's actually pretty key. Honestly, that wasn't even something that popped into my head initially, but that is true. Like when you are deciding, hey, I'm, I'm going to take this vacation with you, you do have to vacation a little bit differently, right? Because not only are you, yeah, experiencing a new place together, but you're doing, having that experience with someone that you probably haven't had it with. And again, even if you have taken, you know, multiple trips with your partner, if this is a new location, allow that to be a new experience and fully immerse yourself in that experience. So yeah, constantly being on your phone, doing that will take away from the experience for sure. Not to say you can't take your pictures and stuff, but not oh, everything. We can, we can right, right. Take your pictures, your video, <laughs> but it don't need to be on the gram or Facebook or Twitter or whatever the other places that it's on now, TikTok and all that. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be the right then and there. It's also really key. And that's actually a piece that I didn't think about, but really immersing yourself in the experience with your partner and in the place because you may never have that experience again. You don't know, right? You may never visit that place again and it may not be with that person again. So allow yourself to definitely have that, which is true. I didn't think about that piece of it, but I think, like, I, I hear what you say about like, you know, you made that trip with whoever you were dating or you went to Paris and that, now, now, which is also why it's important to choose wisely the where's and the who's that you go places with, because that might now change that the thought of a place for you now, right? Like now it's like, oh man, I forever have this memory of this particular place with this particular person. So it's important for that. I'm big on if you guys are freshly dating Within the first six months, I want to start encouraged to take a trip within the first six months. If you are like, I can take this person seriously. Like, I think I see something more here. Not if you're just like doing whatever. Don't, don't do that. But <laughs> if y'all are like, you know, I'm feeling this, you know, I want now I went and traveling is a part of my life. So I have to see this person how they travel like I have to right because it's a part of who I am. It's a part of, of, of my life. And just like what you said, there is. I personally believe there is a difficulty that comes in if you are a traveler day, someone who doesn't travel. There's so many pieces and components and even the love and passion that comes behind traveling that they just won't understand, to be honest, until they actually experience it. It's not to say it can't happen, not to say you shouldn't do it or give it a chance, but I do understand that piece of it. But within the first six months for me, I'm like, we're going to take a trip. Again, where that is within that first six months is not going to be extravagant. It's not. It's going to be... Let's do a bed and breakfast in Jersey, right? Let's, and those are really cute. They're intimate. You can, you know, go into town and see things, but it gives you a feel of how this person is when they travel. Are they tidy? Are they messy, right? Are they polite to people, right? Are they creative? Are they open-minded? It, 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 you learn a lot about that individual. And I think leaning into the, all right, past the six month mark, leaning more into the year mark, then you, I say you can venture, get on a plane and go somewhere a little bit further. Mm-hmm. I also like not going too far or too extravagant the first six months, because especially if it's very early within the first three months, you get to know the person, but you don't really know them like that. If you need a getaway, you can get home. <laughs> I, listen, whatever. Judge me not, but I think about stuff like that. If I, I need to go to Jersey, I know I can jump in my whip and get back, get my ass on home. You know, within a couple hours or whatever the case is, I don't have to get on a plane to go. Like that's important to me. That's important to me. Like, oh, I can grab a cab. I will fuck the cab price. I'm paying for it. Let me go home. You know what I mean? But if you have to go someplace, it's early on. You don't know the person. You got to get on a plane to go there. 
or you stay in there for like a substantial amount of time. Like I think more than honestly, the first trip, the first within a few months, two days is enough. I think that was more than enough. Three, okay. But taking a week long trip, five days to a week with somebody you don't really know, I think that's too much. That, that That's pushing it just a little bit. That can get a little messy. That's a little risky. But two days, I know after the day or two, all right, I'm taking my ass on home, but I need a quick getaway if I need to go. And that's important to me. So I have like different stages and places that I'm willing to go and do. Now I pass the six months into the year. All right, we can spread it out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We can venture here, venture there. But it's important to shoot, to think about that personally. That's my own personal choice. But, you know, it's up to whoever. But think about those aspects before planning a trip. It might be nice because it's in. Everyone's going to Mexico. Oh, babe, let's go to Mexico. Let's pause. <laughs> right? Assess this relationship first. Is this, a, is this relationship Mexico worthy? Mexico worthy. Thank you already. <laughs> Seriously. Right? So those are things to really think about. But go ahead and jump in. You said you had a story. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we touched on that in the last one. This may have happened after that, after we did that one. But real briefly, when you talk about having a, a quick getaway, all right. So uh, I I met someone in, in a travel group, you know, you hit it off well in terms of you know communication and talking on the phone, et cetera. And it, it was a while. We talked on the phone probably like maybe, I don't know, maybe three, three, four months before we actually met. So we fast forward to 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 the meeting point. I actually met her on her turf. You know, I flew across the country and I had offered, you know, initially, you know, to get my, you know, get my own room on the hotel. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she offered her place to stay. And, you know, I felt things were, you know, OK, cool. You know, if you're comfortable with that, I'm, I'm good with that. You know, we, you know, cool. Fast forward, you know, that the, the very I should have knew some, I should have knew something was up. <laughs> the very first night. The very first night, you know, we're out, we're out on the town, we're having a good time, we just left a bar, and now we're out probably at midnight-ish, get some street food. So while we're waiting, you know, to get the street food, and she she says to me, she's like, you, you remind me of somebody. And I'm like, really? Okay. Well, who? She's like, I, she's like, I can't put my finger on it right now, but you remind me of somebody. All right. So we fast forward a couple of days later, now it comes out. I remind her of her ex-husband. These are her words. She couldn't remember, though, her ex-husband? Well, we've been talking on the phone for four or five, you know, three, four months now at this point. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, and and I'm I'm a very chill, laid back, you know, kind of, you know, kind of guy. I'm not like, you know, over the, you know, like over the top. And I know sometimes you meet people and you like, heck, I didn't really get this impression from you you know, you know, just talking or whatever, but I, I'm, I am me, right? I'm like through and through, like nothing about me has changed. So anyway, yeah, you know, she flipped, flipped the script. And so I'm staying there at the house and then all of a sudden, you know what, I, I think like, like by the, the, the third night, I decided I was going to sleep downstairs, sleep downstairs on the couch. Cause I'm like, uh, yeah, this, this, this right here getting out of hand. Now, Funny thing is, or interestingly enough, I had family and friends in, in this particular location. Mm-hmm. So I had places to get to if I if I needed to. Long story short, we went out for brunch. And I was like, yo, I was so uneasy, you know, like it's like walking on eggshells. And to the point that I didn't even eat. I ordered food, but I like I, I didn't eat it because it was just that weird. Where so, you, you know, I, I had me a few drinks. You know, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe this right here, uh, you know, I don't know. I had her drop me off at uh, at, at the Greyhound um, <laughs> bus station, and yeah, I took me a bus back to uh, L.A. and and from L.A. I got on my flight to go <laughs> to go back home because I was like, this, this is, you know. So to your point about having, you know, uh, an escape, and then you see so many of these videos, whether or not they're true or or meant made for entertainment where people fly out somewhere or they, they get flued out oh, as they say. Mm-hmm. And you don't have a way to get, you know, you don't have your own funds to 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 get you back wherever. Yeah. That's that's paramount, especially in those uh, early, you know, stages, you know, like you said, which brings me to another point uh, that you may mention. You said within the first six months. So now let me ask you this, is going on a trip as more important or equally important to meeting the fam, meeting the fam, right? Because you know, you know, meeting the fam 
the, once you get to that level, you like, yo, you meet my fam. But, you know, to your point about traveling together, you said within the first six months, you think you should, you know, go on a trip. So how do you rank that? Trip is first. I don't let people meet my family quickly or easily. Honestly, that's even if I see a future with this person, I still need to fill them out. A lot can happen within the first couple of months. Honestly, even within the, I typically wait closer to a year to let them meet my family, to be honest with you. Like, let me rephrase that. There's members of my family, they may meet immediately. So, you know, my chill cousin, we hang out all the time. If she over my house all the time, you're going to be her. Or, you know, my sister, you know what I mean? Like, you know, she can give a, okay. But my mom, <laughs> you know, my brother, my nephews and certain other aunts. And, no, Mm-mm. it's closer to, closer to the year. Now, this is when I've made a decision like, okay, I can really bang with this person. Like, and I really have some really real fear, feelings for this person. Yeah. Well, traveling happens way before that because a travel can make or break my relationship. I'm not playing. Like, I'm dead serious. <laughs> like, I love like, it. Hey, hey, hey. Nah, we got to yeah. get this first. Okay. No, we have to. We have to. And we talked about in another episode. I think we talked about like who pays and all that stuff first. So, you know, that is between you and your person. I'm one early on. I'm completely okay with going Dutch. I'm 100% fine with that. And then even more recently, even seeing these, these videos, people getting flued out. And then the guy is like, oh, we not, you're not going to let me have sex. And then embarrassing the girl, all kind of stuff. Listen, that is up to you. Hopefully y'all had conversations about all that stuff. Y'all know what's, what's going down and what's not going down and how it's going to happen. What's expected X, Y, Z. But that's definitely first for me. That works. <laughs> How about you? What 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 kind of goals first? Well, and, and sticking with your six month plan, you know, I would say yeah, you know, traveling or going somewhere, you know. But I, I think it's it's different for guys and girls with that. Mm-hmm. I know we kind of might be segueing into a whole other conversation, but I like me. Oh no 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 no! I, I'm I, you you gonna meet the folks, and the reason why I said you're gonna meet the people because I for whatever reason, just lately have not been a good judge of character. So I may see something that I like. I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? It's short, it's short, yeah. bad, you know, blah, blah, blah. Different, you know? Yeah, and then, and then you know, but moms would be like, nah, that ain't, that ain't it. That ain't it. You know, you need to let that go. And, uh, but then, you know, silly, silly boys, you know, boys will be boys. If they say, you know, ah, I like her, you know, she, she look good and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, a couple weeks, after your mom told her to kick her to the curb, you know, now she really showing, you know, the girl showing her true colors. So I, I, I would say me personally, I probably be, you know, hey, take you over here, see how you react, you know, because my family, I, I tell everybody this. Listen, my family, we we a little off. So if you can, <laughs> if you can make it around them, then you can make it anywhere. You know what I mean? So you know, we you're good. Actually. That's not the first time, you're not the first man I've heard say that though. It's like they prefer their partner to meet their family right away. For me, I don't play with family. I don't know. I get it. Like I get it. Parents have a way, family members have a way of assessing people differently, but I can't do it. Mm -mm, I can't. (laughs) I'll meet yours. Hey, whatever. That's your people's. (laughs) I can't do it. mm -mm, I don't know. For something about it, but I get the I get the logic behind it though. Maybe we should have a conversation about that. Maybe we should have another episode talking about, you know, what's the etiquette and kind of like, yeah, how, how that goes in, in regards to that. Because I actually haven't thought about that in that way. And I think also as you get older, maybe we view those things differently as well. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. To wrap this up, what are some takeaways? I know we talked about a lot of things, but what are some takeaways that you can give to someone listening or watching this who is interested in either taking their first solo trip or, you know, wanting to group travel or take their first vacation? What are things that you can, tips you can give them? Tips I can give, a solo trip, do your research. Do your research on your location. That goes for both, you know, men, men and women. That's paramount. Secondly, in terms of solo travel, you know, yeah, give, give people, you know, your, your your updates, you know, hey, I'm going to be here, you know, I'm going to check this place out, I'm going to go, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. And I'll say lastly, as far as solo trips is concerned, just it all starts with booking the trip. You know, once, once, once you put, I, me, I'm like this, once you put money on it, it's, it's, it's solid. You, you, you got to go through with it. As far as group trips are concerned, again, you know, similar, you know, do your research on the, if you, 
on the people you're going to be traveling with, you know, like, you know, know, know the, lo- I say know the, the location, but, you know, what you guys tend to do, you know, while, while you're there and then getting the money together, you know, everybody being on board with getting the payments and stuff like that together. And that's for group trips, They're for vacations. Again, you know, knowing your partner's likes and, and dislike, which may or may not be easy to do within six months, but, you know, you guys can have some type of, you know, middle ground to meet on and 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 take that trip. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, extravagant, you know, like I said, a cute bed and breakfast, that, that's a good idea. You know, I, I would say that and then, you know, just have fun and enjoy each other's uh, time and, and, and company, you know, while you're there. All great, 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 great tips. Thank you so much, Mac, for joining us. And so before we go, tell the folks where they can find you and coming up next for you. Uh, you can uh, you can find me at Mac Travel Guy on IG. The same thing on YouTube. I, I'm working on my YouTube, so if you visit it. It's not a whole lot of videos up there yet. I'm, I'm working on working on getting it there. I, I mostly post on uh, IG. The the next great adventure is going to be me in Nairobi. Like I said, in in, in October. Yes, I'm looking forward to them videos. Your videos be okay. I'll be like, oh, I want to go. <laughs> it's so crisp and, and sharp and like I love how you you just be having the different angles and different vantage points definitely keep that up I'm looking forward to seeing how Nairobi goes you're gonna give me them pointers and some tips as well hopefully you know get that get, get over there myself at some point but thank you so much so 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 much Mac and I can't wait till our next recording likewise thank you for having me Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of The Oasis Podcast. I hope you were able to find something that resonated with you on your journey. Don't forget to subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts and YouTube. Rate us and leave us a review and comment on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and YouTube. Share your favorite episode and like us on Instagram and Facebook. If you have any questions, comments, want to be a guest, or any show ideas, contact us at ajsoasis at gmail.com. That's A-A-Y-J-A-Y-S-O-A-S-I-S at gmail.com or direct message us on Instagram and Facebook.